Robert Kuttner. He's the co-founder and co-editor of the American Prospect Magazine, and he joins us via Skype. Good evening. Uh, it's going to be a fascinating conversation and a fascinating hour ahead. Uh, April, uh, going through those cards in the week, I mean, what a week it has been. It has been exhausted. A lot has transpired. What a week. You're at the White House every day. Bannon mm -hmm. is out, but there's still, there's deep wounds that are far from being healed right now. Yeah. And this is from yeah, everything that's unfolded wounds, in Charlotte. Yeah. yeah. They're deep wounds, um, and, and, and I'm going to start with this, Don. I've been watching the coverage all day. Sorry. Um, yeah, no problem. But I've been watching the coverage all day. And, you know, with the Bannon firing, Bannon is spinning this, and those who are in the Bannon camp are spinning this like it's a great thing. He's got his hands on the weapons. But he was fired. We have to remember, he was fired. And when you're fired and when you leave the White House, you don't have the power you once wielded. Well, typically you don't. We'll see what happens. But he is not in that inner circle. We know that there was a back and forth between, a negative back and forth between Bannon and Jared Kushner, the son-in-law of the President of the United States. We also know that there was a concern about Bannon being one of the problems <clears throat> of leaking. So Bannon and his uh, uh, supporters are spinning this like it is a win. Mm -hmm. But this is not a win. But typically, when you leave the White House, you you don't have the 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 the, the I guess the power, the Washington power that you once wielded. And also, there is a concern, and they're spinning this because they don't want that base, that Bannon base, that Bannon base, the people who were in Charlottesville, uh, some of the other people around the country who support that kind of thing, to break away from the president. Mm -hmm. They're trying to make it look good, but it's not. Yeah. And we will see what happens in the next couple, coming weeks, days, what have you. Yeah, my, uh, you know, Michael, I said that it was possibly to change the narrative. I mean, but Bannon brought the alt-right into the West Wing. Does this, his ouster, address any of the questions of racism or competence from this president? No, uh, Don. I mean, look, Donald Trump is, what, 70, 71 years old. I was thinking about this the other day. He was 22 at the height of the civil rights movement. Apparently that passed him by, uh, and he has no understanding, uh, empathy, anything. He has no moral center. But you know, Steve Bannon, I mean, I don't know how much influence uh, uh, Steve Bannon had on uh, uh, Donald Trump, but he should have sense enough of his own uh, to not do some of the things that uh, he has been speaking directly from his heart. That is very, very clear. So Donald Trump himself uh, is spiraling downward uh, in a vortex of chaos and confusion. And unless he changes, he can't fire his way out of the problems that he's having and that this White House and this entire administration uh, is being consumed by unless mm -hmm. he changes. Yeah. It hey. allows General Kelly to manage up and down, deal with the staff, but a principal. And even and, and I understand and, this, including um, and, a and, principal has to be managed also. Yeah. Uh, by primarily by the chief of staff and other uh, people around him or her. Well, that's and what I was going to say. Someone has happen, someone has to manage this president because clearly, if you look at Matt, if you look at he doesn't you know, want to be managed. If you looked at the pictures, and this is not everyone, by the way, who has come and gone at the at the White House or in the administration, Matt. When you look at th these pictures, this is a higher number than most modern uh, modern administrations, Matt Lewis. Of people who David Gergen talked yeah. about this earlier. I mean, Matt, this is a wholesale turnover of your top people in the first seven months. <laughs> it never happens. Go ahead, Matt. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, Don. Look, I mean, you you showed it to us, right? Don't don't tell us. Show it. I mean, the the pictures uh, they were right there. And earlier today, Brooke Baldwin didn't just talk about the uh, the staffers, the turnover, but also the turmoil. Mm -hmm. You've had the whole Russia stuff, you know. You've had Donald Trump attacking Republicans like Mitch McConnell, Jeff Flake, his own attorney general, Jeff Sessions. You've had Donald Trump fail to pass any legislation, any meaningful legislation, including health care reform. That is the state of affairs today. This administration, it's been six months now, enough time to get your footing, is a disaster. And I yeah. think it's time for Republicans to... Uh, to admit that, and you know, you showed those videos earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're starting to see that some senators yeah. walking away. John, uh, what, what do you think? Remember, on the I hired. The, I've got a big brain or a good mind or a good brain. I hired the <laughs> best people, and then all of these people are gone. 
What does that say? What I'm do you sorry. think of this, John? <laughs> well, I guess if he's hiring the best people, he should probably hire some of us, right, Don? Let's start there. But look, it's the game on what happened here today. It's game on, and that's about as frank as I can be. You know, the detractors inside the West Wing that are celebrating tonight because they were part of Steve Bannon's ouster. You know, my mom taught me an old saying a long time ago, be very careful what you wish for, it might come true. Mm -hmm. Steve, Steve Bannon's ouster today is a punch in the stomach to Trump loyalists and Trump supporters and this movement that really believe the president is onto something and he's trying to re well, make John, and transform read something. the Republican Party into something L L into something th that they that they've not accomplished. Okay, I want to help you make is, your point. Let me help you make your point because this was Bannon ahead. told the, ahead, the Weekly Standard. He said the Trump presidency that we fought for and won is over. We still have a huge movement and we will make something of this of this pres this Trump presidency. But that presidency is over. It'll be something else. And there will be all kinds of fights, and there will be good days and bad days, but that presidency is over. You say this revolution has been hijacked, right? And you said it's a punch in the gut. Go on. Well, look, it has been hijacked by the establishment and the class of Republican-based donors that all they care about is getting money and their globalist agenda, and that's basically it. Now, the only thing that is over with this presidency is Steve Bannon is no longer in that White House. I'm not sure where Steve was headed with that. I'm sure there's a, a, a degree of frustration he has. But the tr Trump based on and, and, and April, they're not going to sit idly by and see their movement and their, and their extension of uh, the victory they had. But Donald Trump's the okay. president. If he That's what I was going to say. John, can I ask you They're not going to see on, Matt. it on, hijacked. John. Matt, uh, John. Doesn't the buck stop with the president? There is no, you're not placing any responsibility, no onus, no blame on the man who is sitting in the Oval Office. This is all other people hijacking. It's the media, it's everyone around him. There's no blame on this president? The president now has to take the reins and take control and do what he did in the campaign and you're get his things done. You're not answering my done. question, John. But done, There's the well, president takes no responsibility think, in this. Of no responsibility. You know People like <laughs> Steve on. Bannon and Ann Coulter, let's say, thrust Donald Trump on us. They pushed Donald Trump on the conservative movement and the Republican Party, and they won. But the guarantee they gave the voters was, this is a guy who believes in nationalism. This is a guy who believes in populism. This is a guy who's a winner. You're telling me that after six months, he's allowed eight, his administration to be months. hijacked? What kind of a winner? It's actually seven months. It's actually seven, seven months. We've got seven. eight months. Okay. We got seven, seven months, months into it took eight an administration, months to hijack it. Okay. and what I didn't say it was hijacked. Now, don't put words in my mouth. I said you did say that. They're not going to allow it. They're not going to allow it to be hijacked. And a lot of the original Trump loyalists have been tossed out of there. So the president's got to figure this out. He's got three key advisors now, uh, along with his children, that still believe in the core principles that got him in there. And that's uh, his and that's, children are uh, Democrats. Stephen Miller, or, or Kellyanne, and Hope. That's very, it. He that's has no principles. Republicans. He I has no principles. He is, he is driving an agenda, but he's now look. He's now surrounded. What is the agenda? The, the agenda has what been agenda? hijacked by distractions. There is no agenda. The, the hijacking of the agenda from the president's own distractions, from wiretapping to confefi to, to possibility of the possibility of a tape between him and Comey, all of this other stuff. Right. The president, and, and then going back and forth just within the last week on the issue of, of Charlottesville, the president is hijacking his own agenda, and his own party is now publicly coming out talking about 2020 and the possibilities that they may not want him on the ticket. There have been a so lot of people who have come and gone. A lot of people have come and gone in this White House. The one me? constant, this is the one constant in the White House right, right here, is the President of the United Donald States. Trump. It's Donald Trump. Yeah. So I don't understand how it's been hijacked by everyone. I can, listen, I just say this, this show faltered and I was no longer in the air. I consider and blame everybody. 
but I'm the leader of this show. I would say, I could have done a better job. I didn't do a good enough job. The audience wasn't interested in me. I wouldn't blame it on everybody else. Why are you blaming it on everybody else? I don't understand that. I, listen, I, I got to get Robert in. Don, we're Don. not blaming it. I, that's, is not, that not, not hang on, hold on, hold on, John. The president. Hold on, John. Did it, what, what did everybody else hear? What did you hear, uh, Michael? Did you hear him blaming it on everybody else but the president? He, Every, it's been it's been captured. Okay, it's stand been, by. They're on an island. Matt, He's what did shot you hear? He shot himself in the foot so many times. <laughs> it's impossible to understand he can still walk. Matt, what did you hear? <sighs> I think that the you know whether it's guests or Steve Bannon or or what did you, you know, hear John say though? I, I thought maybe I misheard. I thought that it was hijacked. That the campaign okay. had been hijacked. In April, you said as much. Robert, what did you hear? What did I hear? Did you hear? Did. In <laughs> go ahead go ahead did you hear him because we all thought he said that it had been hijacked and there was no res Donald Trump bore no re no responsibility for what's happened in his own administration the establishment well are we talking about Bannon no we're talking about John because I thought that maybe we, we have been wrong and I don't want to beat up on John well, you're not beating I'm, up on I'm me. I mean, the, about, the, I want to talk about Bannon. Can I talk about Bannon? Absolutely, because you, you apparently this furor over Bannon is a, 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 this interview with you. Do you feel partly to blame here? I don't know whether it's blame or credit. I mean, I think he was in the process of doing himself in, and I was fortunate enough to get the phone call uh, that turned out to be the straw that broke the camel's back. But my experience of that phone call was that this was a guy much too full of himself who was kind of out of control, who knew that he was probably going down, and if he was going to go down in flames, he wanted to go down with all guns blazing, and didn't have much loyalty to his president. And I think ultimately he got fired because if you're Donald Trump, the one thing you cannot stand is being upstaged by mm -hmm. staff. And Bannon, right. first of all, was getting too much That's attention. Right. Secondly, was disloyal to his president. And I think the irony here is that uh, Bannon was the architect, as, as you said, John, of this neo-fascist uh, white supremacist garbage. And so my worry is that with Bannon out of the White House, he is more liberated to be more effective back at Breitbart and to be a kind of a kitchen cabinet advisor to Trump under, uh, you know, uh, w w without any scrutiny from General Kelly or the rest of the staff, and he can continue to play this role of advising Trump. So I think Trump re, tr Trump's at a crossroads. He's got to back off this white supremacy garbage, or as recent events suggest, he may double down on it with Breitbart pressuring him to do more of it. Mm -hmm. um, John, why are you shaking Don, your head? Can I, no, no, Don, John, can I, I want John to get in because we, I don't want to think we're beating why, up. Why, I want to hear we, from him. Why, why do every conversation we have, we, we now have to bring in the old white, white supremacist this is an absurd this is an absurd statement that you just made. These people have nothing to do with Trump, the movement or anything else. The people that came to Charlottesville a week ago were crackpots and crazies and lunatics. David that the president Duke, disavowed. David Duke that, that, literally that, that said thank you. That, 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 that he told the president. One the time, that one time, you want to keep it, bringing it up mm. over and over and over April because that's that that is all you have. The Democrats have oh, no. Oh, now you're agenda, targeting me. So you want now to you're targeting me. Thing, Did April? David Duke, because the former grand wizard These of the KKK, da Trump it's not ridiculous. It, excuse me? Let me, okay, let, April, let me say this. They're crazy. Let me they're say this. People. Go ahead, David. Okay, okay, well, well they're not. Too. But David Duke did say, David Duke did say, Mr. President, you better watch what you say because we are who supported you. Now, do you negate that? Do you say that didn't happen? David Duke, who was a high leader in the KKK, said that. That is fact. That's not myth. It's not conjecture. He said that. And then he supported him with that waffling statement, the last statement that the president made about both sides. So you cannot say that I'm creating this. I am only reporting fact, and I'm reporting what is given to us by these leaders around this country. So uh, you need to understand that I'm not having here having an agenda or trying to put words in anyone's mouth. You can run back the tape and see John. April, who the it hell what cares is. what David Duke says? Nobody 
cares what this guy says. He's got Apparently a tiny Donald itty bitty following. He's got a he's lot of people. The people who are in Charlottesville care. Either. There okay. was a no, no, April, woman died, John. Nuts, John, I'm not going to argue There's with you. Crazy I'm not going to argue with you. Okay. All right, they guys. are nuts, and I'm glad we're right, agreeing, but I'm not going to argue with you. One at a time. I'm not going to argue with you. Robert, I want to bring you back into this conversation because I think your reporting was so important. Bannon contradicted the president on North Korea. Did you want to add anything to what they were saying before we move on and talk about North Korea? No, I no. mean, I, I just think it's, it's, it's pointless to try and deny that uh, Trump has been legitimatizing these fringe people, giving aid and comfort to them, and that they were a big part of his base. Uh, I, I think the, the really complicated thing about Bannon is that uh, Bannon has a whole economic nationalist strategy that is part of his larger strategy, and it's one part uh, economic nationalism, but it's, it's one part racism. And um, he, in a weird way, thought that he could create a kind of a left-right political coalition <clears throat> by reaching out to me, reaching out to other people who are more on the liberal side, who've been critical of our China policy. But, you know, the idea of, of Trump going into a meeting of the National Security Council and saying, hey, guess what, everybody, I got Bob Kuttner supporting me on China, is delusional. Mm -hmm. And what was just bizarre about this conversation was, here's a guy, if you believe the New York Times story, who already had tendered his resignation under pressure two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and he's living in a kind of a fantasy land where he thinks he's still making policy and he's inviting me to the White House after Labor Day. So you wonder what planet these people are living on, and I guess the question is whether Trump, uh, at this crossroads, is going to distance himself from the really creepy neo-Nazi far right, mm -hmm. or whether he's going to double down on it, as he did Tuesday, as he may do in this rally at Phoenix, if it happens, if he pardons Joe Arpaio. And uh, he needs Bannon in a mm -hmm. weird way if he sticks to this course, because Bannon was the architect of it. Yeah. Hey, Mayor Nutter, I want to play. I want to uh, put yeah. something else up more from uh, Bannon from the Weekly Standard. He says, I feel jacked up. Now I'm free. I've got my hands back on my weapons. Someone said, it's, it's Bannon the Barbarian. I am definitely going to crush the opposition. There is no doubt. I built a bleeping machine at, uh, at Breitbart, and now I'm about to go back knowing what I know, what I know, and we're about to rev that machine up and rev it up. We will do. Knowingly, knowing what I know, I mean, what do you, what do you mean? It's <laughs> well, first of all, it sounds, sounds like a guy who's maybe holding on to himself, but uh, he really does sound a little bit like the nutcase over in uh, North Korea. I mean, I don't, I don't know this man, uh, you know, uh, read the news accounts, um, but he sounds like he's coming off the, uh, coming unhinged or off the rails, much like his former now boss, uh, Donald Trump. But the other thing I want to mention to you, Don, is um, from all accounts, Virtually everyone who has left the White House, maybe with the exception of uh, Jim Comey, Donald Trump still stays in touch with these folks. So I think it was April that mentioned, you know, in the White House, out of the White House, he still talks to these people. This stuff, this white supremacy, neo-Nazi, all of that, I believe now we've seen the real Donald Trump on Tuesday. That is in his heart and soul. Mm. He is a right. vacuous vessel that people pour stuff into and he then amplifies it out uh, to the public. He has no center uh, and goes with whatever the last person who talked to him uh, about and then says it. And so we don't ever know what he's going to do. He created his own problems. He continues to create his own problems and then wants to whine about his agenda, which no one on this panel, at least, maybe except for the one gentleman, no one else knows what that agenda is and then dumps on everyone who could possibly help him with his agenda. Yeah. that no one knows about. Matt, I want you to take a look at this. I hope you have a monitor there. This is a, a photo of President Trump on the phone with Putin. This is from January. Everyone in that photo, Priebus, Bannon, Spicer, Flynn, all gone aside from the president and the vice president. And the source says that the chief of staff, Kelly, is not done yet. Yeah, watch out Sub Gorka, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, uh, it, it's that picture is telling. That's a, a big important moment, and uh, they're all gone, and, and except for you know, Mike Pence and uh, the president himself. And look, I think it's a valid point. Just because, you know, though, I, you you have to say, uh, just because Steve Bannon is gone doesn't mean that he won't that he's uh, gone still be talking, right? You know, <laughs> Roger Stone, 
Corey right. Lewandowski. Yeah, exactly. These people still talk to the president. Yeah. I would say this. I think we may Scaramucci. be magnifying the power of Breitbart.com a little bit. I know they're important. I know they're well. Yeah, this gives them some some a nice publicity. Right. right. You yeah. know how they. Re I mean, I, look, a lot of people out there do read them, but do you know how they really have influence? It's when the mainstream media shows 